legend has come among us. I am so excited to welcome the great Hugh Masekela. Welcome back to Nairobi. Okay, the proper pronunciation is Masekela. Masekela. Ki, ki, not ke, ki. Masekela. Nailed it. Yeah, Masekela. And you have to smile there. Masekela. Masekela. Ah, there you go. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I am really honored to What's have you. What's a legend in, in, in um, Swahili? I'm doing the interview now. <laughs> what is a legend in Swahili, actually? The Shuja. Shuja means, um, it's not actual legend, but it means like a warrior. Yeah, that's heroes. That's hero, exactly. Our well, that's because, is that's because in Africa, historically, mm -hmm. you can't be a legend. Come because on. you come from the village, mm -hmm. and in the village, you're just one of the village people. <laughs> and if you go out and you become famous, you come back, you're just a village boy. Was Nelson Mandela a village boy? Yeah. Really? But we didn't call him a legend. Everybody else did. What did you call him? Hmm? What did you Mandela. call him? Just that? Yeah, Mandela. I mean, but he was older than me, so we called him that. Like you called Kenyatta Mze. Mze, yes, yeah. exactly. But and you and but Mze was enough, you know. Mm -hmm. You didn't say legend Mze. <laughs> <laughs> but you are from from his village, the yes. wonder. He said might be Mze for you, but for us he's just a village boy. A little atla. Yeah. Did I say that right? All all I mean all the all these guys these people I shouldn't call them guys, all these people who become f famous for our votes and all that. Right. Yeah, but they just they just like you. No, I'm just not, I am not like you because you... Not like me. Yes. Like you. <laughs> the reason why I say that is you've been singing for an eternity and yeah, you're still going strong. Yeah, but it doesn't make me a legend. It just made me, makes me maybe a good um, uh, a receiver of uh, the gifts of the people I come from. But because the they're the ones, you know, in other words, we're all born naked. Right. So when somebody goes around thinking they are great... They're actually beginning their end. When people honor you and honor your craft and yeah. your talent, yeah. and they come out in large numbers like they do in Nairobi and you've toured around the world and they really appreciate what you do, yeah, doesn't that give you some kind of authority on this subject? No, it just makes me uh, a musician who is lucky to be paid for what he's doing. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Yes. My grandmother, you know, raised me and like, I was away from, from home for t in exile. For almost 30 years? Yeah, but uh, and, and after 20 years, I went to live for a while in Botswana. Mm -hmm. And she came to see me. And people would come and take pictures and may make me want to sign. Yes. Uh, they are, uh, so one day she said, I've got to talk to you in private. Mm -hmm. So she put me, took me to the back garden where I was staying. She said, all these people who come here, do they know you? Right. I said, no. I said, so they just come. Yeah. She said, she said, we didn't grow up like that. You can't just come and arrive and, you know, you have to, you know, you can't just come to somebody's place and, like, say, sign here. Yes. That. So he said, well, let me tell you, when you were born, mm -hmm. you didn't bring anything. He <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> and for three years, mm -hmm. for three years, we tried to get you to know where the bathroom was. And um, you didn't have any idea. Right. You didn't have any clothes. We fed you. And um, we housed you. You lived here for like 17 years, mm -hmm. eight more than all of us, <laughs> and never put a penny on the table. Mm -hmm. We taught you how to think. We taught you how to walk. We taught you how to talk, you know. And then when you wanted to play that pee -pee 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 thing of yours, we yeah. supported you. And got you one. Yeah, and so like if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be anything. You know, and so you'll never be able to pay us back for all those things, you know. Mm -hmm. And wherever you go, when people t uh, try to put you on a pedestal, you better tell them this story because if you don't, I will send lightning from my <laughs> grave <laughs> and all of you in that room will die. <laughs> so I'm s telling you this for your own safety. So that there is no lightning that will Don't come call here. me legend because my grandmother will get pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> You understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. But based so, uh, Mandela also had a grandmother. Mandela also had a grandmother. Yeah. Based on your achievements <laughs> in, in music, but also in activism, I yes. think you have earned that title. Absolutely. Yeah, but the thing is, um, that's if you think, if you think you have earned something, if you feel entitled, 
right. they're already in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you're here to serve people. As, as soon as you think you have arrived, that's when you're leaving, mm -hmm. especially in the arts, because the arts are there forever, you know. Uh, like what you're doing now. I mean, you can do it until you're older than Larry King. I but you so. can't play soccer. Uh, yeah, after a certain age, you, you're just not I good I bet you you can't play anymore. No, I, I can't. Oh, you can, okay. Are you calling me fat? <laughs> <laughs> no, old. <laughs> or old. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, when you fit, you want, if you're playing for a pro professional soccer, right. when you enter your late 20s in sports, mm -hmm. you're already old. You're, the looking biggest at your last, you're looking at your last Dude, years. The biggest deal just happened. <coughs> Old but Manchester United is 23, 89 million pounds. Who's that? Uh, yeah. At 23. Well, they pay eight. you quick a lot of money because they know you're on your way out already. <laughs> <laughs> they might get quick value. But isn't that the beauty <laughs> of what you do, which is you can keep singing until you drop dead on stage like Papa Wemba. Otherwise, at 80 something, he was still on stage singing and doing what he loves. Who's and that? And you can keep doing that. Who's that? Yeah. Oh, 90. I mean, have you ever heard of UB Blake? He was a piano player from yes. New Orleans. He, be, he played until he was 100 years old. Wow. You know? And if you write or do, you know, direct, or you can do it forever. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, there's no, don't rush to be famous or to be, because uh, if you're in, in, in anything to be famous or to be known, you know, you're in trouble. But isn't that the way of the world these days, especially with social media and all of those? You want to arrive on the scene and become an overnight star. Well, and this everybody's a, calling your name and your Twitter is going crazy. It's the way of the egotistic. If you have an ego, you'll think you are important. But uh, fear of my grandmother <laughs> makes me very careful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you, you, you have to watch it. The gods are watching you. <laughs> <laughs> do you intend to play? At, do you intend to retire at one point? I can't retire because what I, I'm doing, I was bewitched. <laughs> 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 I mean, really, I didn't, I didn't get up when I was a, a kid and say, I'd like to play there, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I was born, and like, I think by the time I was nine months old, I was singing. All I wanted to do was get to the music, the, the, the gramophone, you know. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to hold it for me. By the time I was five years old, I started playing the piano because I knew every song that was ever recorded or that was sung in the street or right. in the, you know. Because I wasn't in control. Music just was pulling me. And like by the time I was eight, nine, you know, you work in the house, and sometimes when there's visitors, you have to take them the biscuits and the tea. Right. And my mother would say, my grandma, take this to the visit. Don't sing. <laughs> Don't sing. Just take the yeah. biscuits. Because I was always singing, and they used to gossip about They thought I wouldn't hear me. Watch what you're going to sing. <laughs> you know? So my mother finally said, maybe we should get in piano lessons. Mm -hmm. When I was five years old, when I was 14, I saw a movie about a trumpet player, and I decided to play the trumpet. So from five years old, then you picked up all these instruments, got piano lessons. Do you know that musicians in 2016 who can't play an instrument? They're not musicians. What do you mean? Well, maybe they're technologists. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, if you're a musician, you have to be able to play um, an instrument or sing because the, the voice is also an instrument. Then you have to study and you have to practice every day. But you make but a beat on a computer and they're good and people dance to them and you make a big hit song. Yeah, so that's uh, Gangnam style. Yes. Yeah, but that, you know, I'm not a musician. I mean, there's a difference between uh, selling um, a lot of units and, and playing music. Mm -hmm. You know, when people found out, when, when, when uh, Michael Jackson sold eventually 60 million copies of Thriller, mm -hmm. All the, you know, before the record companies were interested in the artistic um, um, prowess of an artist, and yeah. that's why they used to sign you, you know, but it didn't make, they were not looking for hits, just good music. Mm -hmm. After that, um, accountants, you know, when the rich accountants marketers. and lawyers and marketers, they bought the whole uh, music business, and um, it stopped being for like uh, music, and it was for how many units can you sell? And then came like Steve Jobs and them. And um, they made it possible for you to go ah into a machine and then the rest you can do. You can auto tune it. Fingers. It sounds amazing. Yeah. No, it doesn't sound amazing. It <laughs> sounds amazing to those people who think it sounds amazing. <laughs> it's an electronic sound. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, but there's nothing um, amazing about electronic sound. The only thing that's amazing about electricity is the light you get from it. <laughs> you know, they say Steve Jobs and the iPhone revolutionized multiple industries, including music. It because killed, it made it it killed the technology killed the music industry. How? Because people who, who used to sell 20, 30 million records are now very happy, very happy if they sell one million. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, it reduced, like, the sales of records, of CDs, by um, more than 80%. But it made a lot more people be able to make it in music, because if you can sell your, your, your single for music, a dollar... It's not music, man. They made it in technology. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's be clear. <laughs> they made it in technology, and... Um, you see, it democratized it, because previously no, 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 you needed no, no, no. to get a, a record label to think you're good enough for them to give you a contract. And yeah, but they're not musicians, mm -hmm. record labels. They're business people. Right. They're looking at how much money they can make off you. And as long as, um, as soon as you don't sell records anymore, they dump you. Did but you ever worry about that in your career? Well, I didn't go into music to be famous or to be known. I went into music because I loved it. When the time I was 15, 16, I was earning a living from it. Uh, um, uh, I was, you know, getting like three pounds a night, <laughs> Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon. And in those days, nine pounds was a fortune. You could live on nine pounds? More. I mean, like I was earning. At one time, I was earning 10 pounds a week. So I was a band leader in a big review. Mm -hmm. I was about 18 then. And so I asked, you know, the owner of the show, the boss, for a raise. And my parents were like uh, 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 workers in... Um, municipal or social worker and my father was a health inspector and um, this guy because my father had brought me to him to say this boy has decided to play and I hear you want him uh, so I got 10 pounds a week but then I went, by the time I became a band leader 18 months later I asked him I said listen all the other people are getting increases and I'd like to earn 15 pounds a week now and he looked at me rejuged I said are you crazy? You want to earn more than your parents combined? <laughs> How do you think they'll feel? <laughs> Did you ever get that raise? No, I left. <laughs> I left. That's, that's the great thing about being, you know, being uh, your own person and not worrying about making a fortune. If you know, if you need for the money, the people will know because they'll support you. Right. And that guy said, "You'll never make it. You'll never make it again." Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> that, but that was not my quest. I wasn't there to make it, you know. I just loved music and I work hard at it. And I was yesterday we had a workshop and I was telling you know the young people I said, anything you do if you don't work hard at it, you'll always be an employee. You know, you'll always be. You'll never have your own thing. Uh, uh, but if you work hard at it. You can be the boss of your own show. You can even, like, probably oh, eventually the have a station. Yeah. But you have to work hard. It doesn't come. And it's not going to come to you because you're talented. Because you have to have a little hustle. How much of making it is talent and how much of it is the hustle you talk about? Um, uh, the talent is maybe, like, 50%. You know, but if you're just talented and you can't talk for yourself, they're going to take you to the cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So talent is not enough. You have to uh, know the, the, the industry or the profession you're in, know how it works, and know uh, who to say go to hell to. But you also have to be able to like uh, uh, be so good at your craft that you can say, no, I don't, wa I, 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 I don't want okay. to do that. I want to do what I want to do. Who are your musical influences? Who are the people you Everybody. listen to? Everybody. Even right now? I listen to I have, I have, I have, I have months, eras. Like uh, for it's funny enough because I was I was working. I wanted to to write the, the you know the uh, um, not the ultimate, but uh, the great a good Congolese mm -hmm. kwasa kwasa song. Oh yeah, Aye. it was very popular in Kenya. Yeah, and and so. Uh, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there's a record of Papa Wembers, oh, Papa and Wemba. it's called, I think it's called Bakala di, 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 di Kuba. Mm -hmm. And there was one track there, that was just it, you know, it was a 10 minute track, and like, it's like, when they sing, you know, and then one sings and one sings, 
So I said, I got to make a record like that. Wow. But I worked at it. It's a study, mm -hmm. the style. Mm -hmm. You have to like learn the style. When I met Fela, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I stayed with him for like uh, uh, maybe a month, and I played every night with his band. And sometimes I couldn't stop playing because soloing because his band was so unbelievably fantastic. Mm -hmm. And he'd come and push me. So when I say, Masigela, you, my music sweet you, right? <laughs> you sweet you, start up. You like it so? Yeah, you, my music sweet you. I said, yeah. I said, well, let me tell you something. You will never get this music right. It will take you 30, 40 years before you can get it. And I thought he was joking, you know? And I said, I fell. And every time I tried, sometimes he'd like uh, call me and say, ah, I see you are trying, but you don't get it. <laughs> and I only got it this year. <laughs> you After know, all this time. Yeah, the, you know. Because everything, you have to study it if you want to do it uh, right. Okay. Otherwise, you sound like an imitator. Why have you always combined music with activism? No, I came from a continent that was uh, oppressed. And everybody, basically, when I was born, um, African activism didn't start until I was a teenager. So mm. I, we grew up in South Africa. We grew up in rallies. We grew up in boycotts. We grew up in marches. So you were politically active at, the, at a young age? Everybody was. Mm -hmm. Everybody was, except the sellouts, right. except the collaborators. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, we, 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 I mean, we, we, we actually sometimes were in near massacres where, like, many people were killed. So we grew up. We grew up with that. We, on, on Sundays, we went to rallies, and we grew up knowing, you know. And people thought, like, we were, I mean, used to feel sorry for us, but they should have felt sorry for the establishment because they were trying to keep up with us. Mm -hmm. And we beat them uh, and, uh, at fence jumping. They couldn't do it, you know. At wall jumping, they could. They couldn't run as fast as us. And uh, when they entered the township, the whole township would be ringing. Mm -hmm. But many people are like that in this country. They might have passed away, but many people who lived during the resistance in this mm -hmm. country, it was like if your whole, you know, community is 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 is, is, is fighting like uh, the oppressors, and you're a kid. Okay. And but you have to be in there, and you know the songs, and you don't know who wrote them. But as soon as they start the song, uh, you know it because it's usually protest songs are usually two or three lines. Yes, and the mandala is quite f famous. As but well. yeah, every I mean every country has their holler. But uh, I, n I I never considered myself an a, an activist. You know, I think that the true activists are the people who really liberated. Um, um, African countries in South Africa are those people who lost their lives, mm -hmm. who gave their lives, and the thousands of them. Those are your heroes, but they never mention because they always take somebody and make them a symbol of the struggle. Because he needs a figurehead of any, every struggle, right? The Black Lives well, Movement is leading. Well, each well, side. I don't know. You know, if you go to Scandinavia mm -hmm. uh, or you go to Switzerland, you don't know who the leaders are, True. because they just go to work. Okay. So from coming to that, you received one of South Africa, actually South Africa's highest honor. And then 22 years after the independence that you all fought so hard for, are you happy with the direction South Africa is taking where you're at? I don't consider myself an Af a South African per se anymore. You know, I consider myself a human being first uh, from Africa. I think that we, we even don't know that we live in artificial borders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That these borders that we live in were created in 1886. And we fight each other of, over, over, the these borders. over these borders. And that we restrict some Africans from going across to other countries because of these borders. Yes, that were not created by Africans, you know. So uh, I think my interest has become more for, I think what we have lost is our heritage. I've, I've, I've just uh, formed a um, um, uh, heritage foundation mm -hmm. to try and help. I mean, like our children today, um, many of them can't even speak the mother tongue. True. You know what I mean? And many, the parents won't let them speak uh, that because they must speak English. Yes, but I will for parler français, but that's kind you know. And como se dá, para falar português, you know. And you know, so like when people come to Africa, they don't come to see us. They come to see the animals. And they come to see the geographical size because we are invisible. We are bad imitations of the people who oppressed us. And yet there is no richer. 
There is no richer uh, 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 society in the world like Africans internationally. We just like our diversity. And we create a design, architecture, literature, you know. But we don't even know. I mean, here in Kenya, you can ask people, when did Kenya start? They probably say, well, 1963 when we got independence. So, I mean, we're living in an age where, like, if we don't do something about the heritage restoration, 20 years from now, your children, when they ask them who they are, they're going to say, they say we used to be Africans long ago. <laughs> don't laugh, man. It's sad. <laughs> wow. I could happening. talk to you the whole day because you have so much wisdom. That it's not wisdom. It's just like, uh, what's there? What's happening? What's the truth? Will you sing something for me, please? Only if you pay me. I can't afford you. Yeah? I can't afford you. You can't afford me? Yes. Then don't, don't engage me. <laughs> <laughs> you see those two people there? Yes. Yeah, if I sing, they'll go afterwards. They're going to say, man, you went there and sang for free for Larry? <laughs> Do you know what's going to happen? Everybody's going to ask you to sing for free. You don't have to sing a whole song. You could sing a few lines. <laughs> Then you didn't sing for free. You only gave a teaser yeah. of your performance at the Safaricom Jazz Lounge. So when did you find out that you thought you were clever? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear me sing, come to the show, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> because I can hardly sing. I'm more of a croak. I was a the holler. He's performing at the Safaricom Jazz Festival this Friday. You might have missed it. If you're watching this right now and you're not out there, you might have missed it. It's just such an honor to have you come and speak to us, Brahi. Wait till you get the bill. Oh. <laughs> We're just going to close down the station and sell it to you, and, okay. and I think we can afford your that bill. Is my ma that is my main aim. That's your mission. Yeah. Good. You nailed it. No, but I'm, I'm heritage. We have to bring back heritage mm -hmm. into our lives. Otherwise, we can't be what we're trying to be. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larry. How are you saying, Gibong? Asante sana. Asante sana. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate it. Please come back, speak to us when you're next in Nairobi. Thank you. If they let me in. They will let you in. <laughs> oh, that just happened. Huma Sekila. Ah, <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs>